something that creates a good partnership is to be able to offer something that the other can't provide. You know, with David, he's a very good negotiator. He's uh, very strict and straight to the point. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome to another episode of Soju Bomb. Uh, my name is Anthony Orke, uh, and in today's episode, uh, we have my two fellow senpais here, uh, Kim Senpai Squad Nguyen. Say hey. hello, Kim. What's up? What's up? Uh, and our him. other uh, was it? Wasn't he a prince? Yeah, yeah he was our prince. prince. Still prince. Still prince. Yeah, uh, prince, prince Marvin Square Noodles. Yeah, am I gonna work my, my myself up to a king? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there, there you go. So, all right, uh, to catch everybody up for context's sake, uh, at the end of last week's episode, um, the guys and I had a little chat after we recorded, and we we're like, man, it's you know the end of the world and everything, <laughs> and I'm just thinking like, okay, so what, like you know, because. What we were talking about is like losing track of time because we're like, oh man, like I don't even know what day it is, right? Yeah. Like yep. uh, I remember Marvin mentioning like he was like, yeah, like freaking, I have no idea what day. I didn't even know we were supposed to record today. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, so going into it, we're like, man, like so what date it is is it? And then Kim just kind of out of nowhere was like, holy shit, like it's soccer con. Oh, yeah. I'm like what? He's like, yeah. And so I was like, yeah, wasn't there cons? He's like, yeah, today. Yeah. Today. Right? Yep. I'm supposed so, to see uh, about now. <laughs> Exactly. Literally about now. Actually, it should be wrapping up right about now. But yeah, um, yeah so going into it, uh, happy Soccer Con, everybody. Uh, this is everyone's Soccer Con experience. You made it. Uh, <laughs> I'm so <laughs> sad. Yeah. yeah. So uh, happy Soccer Con to everybody. Ha so uh, sorry, happy Soccer Con 2020 to everybody. Uh, yeah, hopefully you had a yeah, good con, con experience. Don't <laughs> say that. That's so, so mean. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, um, first and foremost, Kim, why why were you so uh, so passionate about expressing that it was supposed to be soccer con uh, yeah. this weekend? Okay, so what was yeah. supposed to happen at a soccer con was um, the uh, nine city tour that me and David was um, planning on this year. Um, mm -hmm. The first city was uh, Seattle, and then it was going to continue um, during Fanime, which is in May. So this was basically going to be our big like opening oh. with our tour. Uh, mm -hmm. But unfortunately, the Rona decided to just be like, psych! <laughs> so I ended up basically stopping our plans, which is, you know, a big bummer. But um, yeah. we're just trying to plan ahead for it and see what, what we can do for the future. Uh, we postponed sure. it to next year, so, um, okay. you know, I'm excited for that. Nice. Now, obviously... Um a project that big because you know and both marvin and myself know you as kind of the go-to guy for lit ass parties and yeah. uh for any of our audience that didn't know like if you want to have a good time you find kim <laughs> <laughs> whatever con he's at and you're at um so when it comes to this event then like how many different parties because you know I i've seen you throw like parties in the past uh yeah. And, you know, you tend to have teams that, you know, operate with you along with your booth, along with a whole array of other things when it comes to like media, marketing, everything like that. Mm -hmm. So um, kind of talk about a little bit more of what, so well, okay, let's let's dial it back a little bit, right? Because I think we're jumping ahead of ourselves when it comes to the party space. Yeah. But what, so first of all, like what's the significance of Sakura Con in general? Like what is yeah. it, where is it, um, and what what does it mean to you? Yeah, so um, Soccer Co is actually kind of what I would consider a home convention back in the, you know, in the US. Um, yeah. Because I moved to the US in 2013, 2014. And mm -hmm. um, it was basically the convention where I'll go to every year. And um, a lot of my friends, um, I met them at Soccer Con. So it was kind of like a convention that um, was very important to me, mm. to my growth. Um, and after starting the brand uh, Senpai Squad, um, I yeah. moved to I moved to Texas when I started, so I eventually stopped going to SakuraCon for maybe two three years. Yeah. Um, so I took that big break, and then when I went yes uh, last year, um, it was a big like eye opener as to like how far I've grown. Oh. Um, huh. And a lot of people were happy to see me. And I was surprised yeah. that so many people remembered who I was. Um, I was expecting okay. to, because I had a booth at SakuraCon last year. 
Um, yeah. That was my first time having a booth there. Uh, okay. I didn't really expect anything. It was just, oh, another convention. Um, unfortunately, uh-huh. I wasn't able to do my photography and videography, but it w- I was happy to be there. Mm. And all yeah. of my friends and all like my fans that were back in the day, they came to my booth and was like, yo, it's been so long. It's good to see you. So yeah. I really want to go back to that convention just because it brings back those memories. Uh, sure. Yeah. Okay. And that's what's up. Um, what, so with that being kind of like the, the first set of cons that you went to, um, you know, cause w- what had it been? How many years was it that you said since, since you'd been before? Um, well, well okay. What year was your year. first one? Uh, actually it was 2012 or 2013 and this was before I moved to America. Oh, um, wow. Okay. So before time. I moved to America, I had the option to travel to West coast just to see if I wanted to move there. Mm-hmm. And the month that I had the option to visit, um, uh, the US, mm-hmm. SacroCon was happening. Yeah. So I literally nice. told my dad, hey, when I'm going to America, can I go to this uh, convention in Seattle? He was like, <laughs> yeah. hell yeah. And he took me down there. And uh, yeah, yo, I had a nice. really good time. So that was a contribution to my experience before America. And that's probably one of the few reasons as to why I wanted to move. Ah. Do you feel like that, nobody, nobody that set that, the frame? Right? Yeah, I think. Yeah, there you go. Like Shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you, so do you feel that it had an impact on you or what, or rather what type of impact did it have on you coming in 2012, 2013? Cause I, even for most of us that are in the con scene, like that's still considered kind of early days yeah. uh, for a lot of us. I definitely between the three of us for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. but that kind of being your first impression of what cons were like Com- in America, like, uh, compared exactly. to what you're used mm-hmm. to, like what, what was that comparison like? Yeah. I mean, I, so you know, obviously, um, the convention scene played a big part of my life uh, with the transition from the UK to the US. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I um, that was kind of like a big value as to whether I would decide to move or not, mm-hmm. whether the convention scene, you know, was as good as, you know, my expectations. And it definitely exceeded it. Wow. Um, I already yeah. had a pretty decent presence in the UK. So, you yeah. know, it, it, it was difficult to impress me, but soccer con did impress me yeah i actually just want to ask uh, a question regarding that matter because you said 2012 2013 obviously it wasn't as crazy as it was um or it's not as crazy um compared to now um my telling uh, or my telling me how it was like um back in 2012 or 2013 like yeah, what's um, rather? I think they still carry it to this year as, and I think they're very, very um, cosplay focused. Um, they uh, nice. promote cosplaying very well, and that was definitely down my alley because mm. uh, back then I was a cosplay photographer and videographer. So being able to see all these costumes and the uh, scenery being very beautiful back then in uh, Seattle, um, it just made it made perfect sense for me. Ah, okay. hell yeah. Yeah, unfortunately, I wasn't really able to um, experience the, uh, you know, other stuff as in like panels and mm. uh, exhibit hall that much mm-hmm. um, back then. But um, after being able to go multiple years, I kind of had a little bit of everything. Gotcha. Yeah. What, like, is there a lot of difference um, in terms of like feel, like overall, just... Um like vibe of the convention mm-hmm. yeah um honestly like with i mean i because i spent a lot of my time in this specific area called the photographer area mm-hmm. it it, I, it kind of reminds me of like um like uh at home, being at home it's like everyone who you're comfortable with mm-hmm. um so yeah. i spent my time a lot at this specific area of the convention center but um i forget what the question was no but, no no um rather what's <laughs> the uh the difference is there a difference in like the overall vibe, oh, the vibe, vibe yeah. of the convention yeah. yeah so um i just feel like the difference between that and other conventions is that this is very um cosplay friendly mm. it's it's just like the majority of the attendees are cosplaying so it makes everyone else you know when you're starting off brand new when you're trying to cosplay right mm-hmm. you feel yeah. a little intimidated 
um, you're like, oh, maybe not many people are going to be cosplaying. But with this convention, everyone is cosplaying. Mm -hmm. So it's very open to everyone. And I think that's yeah. something that, you know, not a lot of other conventions promote or have. Ah, uh, I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's what's up. So going into it then, um, it being 2012, 2013. So mm -hmm. let's talk about Kim then and Kim now then, right? Yeah. So Kim now is uh, <laughs> obviously very successful entrepreneur, um, very litty, very, <laughs> very bubbly personality. Wild and out. So what, what did Kim, yeah, exactly, wild and out, um, you know, getting into crazy Atashas and everything like that, like hella mm -hmm. big in the car scene, hella big in the, the, the apparel scene. Um, what was Kim in 2012, 2013 like? Like, did you have like, uh, cause I, I don't know if you've had the entrepreneurial mindset going into it. Like, you know, mm -hmm. obviously it being your first con, you're like, whoa, like this is, so this mm -hmm. is what America's like, right? Like, what mm -hmm. was your, um, so, like who were you at that time? And like, what was your business acumen slash like marketing shut in going yeah. like at that time? So, you know, I had my YouTube channel back then. It was called uh, KBR Noodles. So I had hey. some sort of uh, following, <laughs> uh, but nothing big, right? Um, yeah. My goal for that, my, my vision was to just basically capture beautiful moments, people having fun, mm. people's costumes, yeah. building friendships, relationships um, throughout all these, you know, um, meetings. Um, so okay. that was pretty much my vision, just capture beautiful moments. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, nothing Damn, really business, but obviously, you know, it then led to me being able to utilize my fan base to start my business, you know. Gotcha. Did you ever sure. think that um, you would be a successful videographer first before you got into the whole Itasha scene, before you got into the whole vendor life? Did you, mm -hmm. did you think that your videography could be very much sustainable in the future at that time as in living wise correct yeah yeah, that what you're saying? yeah yeah so um i knew like back then i so i definitely knew my videography skills wasn't as up to par as the amount of followers i have so i felt like i was lacking in skill mm. um, uh -huh. but what i had was um, dedication and motivation to pump out all these videos like the same day, next day. Um, and that was something that I had above most of the videographers out there was that as soon as I film on Friday, day one, mm -hmm. Saturday mm -hmm. morning, you would see my video up on YouTube yeah. and that would oh, start the video um, above everyone else. Uh, yeah. So that was something that I had, you know, above everyone else, but I was definitely lacking in skill. Um, I had the creative mindset. Gotcha. I had definitely very good um, camera work, mm. um, but there's yeah. just a, a lot of other stuff that I was lacking. Mm. Um, Do you think so that I, your um, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. no problem. Yeah. Did, do you think that your um, because that's a very unique niche, and even today, like people that have like fast turnaround, meaning like fast upload times, mm -hmm. are very unique, and I feel like very popular. So, do you feel mm -hmm. like who was doing that at that time? Um, there was basically uh, MLZ uh, Studio, Axon L, oh, yeah. uh, nice. OCL Productions. Uh, those are like all the big guys. And then there's a couple yeah. other, like, I'm not kind of like um, below them, uh, yeah. but definitely I did sure. look up to them as inspiration. Yeah, those yeah. are still the big guys. Uh, shout out to them. Yeah. I've, I've, I don't think I've, uh, are they still around or yeah. like what's their. They're uh, still the big guys around. They're still around. They, um, uh, most of them kind of just do it every now and then. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Dang, cool beans. Um, man, there's, there's so many, like, it opened up a good amount of questions, like, that mm -hmm. I'm curious about. Cause again, like, I feel like, you know, as, as specific as I get with these questions, as far as like, why, um, you know, what soccer con meant to you and what, what impact it had on you? Like, mm -hmm. I feel like there's a lot of indirect things that stemmed from your first experience there. Yeah. And that's kind of the whole point as to why I'm asking kind of the origin story, you describing what soccer con is and what mm -hmm. it means to you personally, because, you know, for kids out there that want to be Kim Nguyen when they grow up, mm -hmm. um, you know, like the, mm -hmm. these are the different types of ingredients, um, that kind of help build that because mm -hmm. from there you were primarily focused on, you know, your media, uh, yeah, and fun. then going into, yeah. you know, the events, yeah, the events and stuff like, okay, so for instance, let's talk about the events then. Like what after party scene was there at Sakura Khan at the time, even if, like, if there were, 
Like, yes. did they have raves? Did they have after hotel parties? So like, what they there have? Was, there was a sense of party scene, definitely. Um, there was the official uh, Saku Khan rave. Uh, mm-hmm. And I remember going to the, the Saku Khan rave once and filming. Oh. Just for personal nice. YouTube use, not for their media team. But uh, it definitely opened my eyes as to the, the scene, as in yeah. there, are, there is a demand for, for parties out there. Um, yeah. And then I remember one year there was um, a party just across the street. It was, I think it was like an arcade and it was hosted mm-hmm. by another company, um, but they had their own party going on too. Um, nice. And uh, those are the two main ones. But yeah, what led to me seeing that afterwards was, I mean, what happened after that was me trying to um, start my own, but more in the mm-hmm. daytime. Um, so this is actually kind of kickstarted me throwing events is that I started to um, throw kind of like a mini gathering and like party kind of events during the day, which is crazy to say, but uh, (laughs) that's that's freaking insane. So I would, so as to go back, there is the area called the Brutographer area. And the reason why (laughs) um, it was so popular was that uh, it's a big kind of like strip where you can kind of line up cosplayers and photographers Whoa. in this wall okay. where um, there's like amazing available light for people to take photos um, so it was just like a beautiful area good lighting mm-hmm. and just a lot of space for people to work with um, so it's kind of like a generic meetup spot for everyone yeah. Um, Hell yeah. what I would do um, kind of like halfway through the day is to bring my speakers there <laughs> and to just blast it and uh yeah everyone had fun we start dancing mm-hmm. we start filming and just good old times i'm sure there's videos around back in the day but yeah yeah, that, yeah. so this was the start of you lugging around your speakers. big ass speakers <laughs> yep that was holy it. crap yeah dang i think i think i think a lot of people owe thanks to sakura Con <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because yeah, literally what what you did there like you do it at all these other cons and because of that like that like those are the memorable shit yeah. you're like oh mm-hmm. man there's that dude with the wagon with the speakers <laughs> you know what i mean and this is where it started that's yeah. so Standard freaking low, dude. Went, <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh yeah uh, on top of that too, like the uh, the brotography like area kind of reminds me of like uh, the AX, you know, like by the parking lot. The um, yeah, the shoe, shoe horse. the uh, cosplay alley. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. How long? How long had that been going on at AX? Do you know? Like, I'm pretty. Has sure, that always been there? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Like, since it's, I mean, I don't. I I went to AX 2013, but it's all kind of always been a thing to meet okay. up at that area to take photos. Yeah. 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 Huh. I didn't discover the horseshoe until I started doing photography, which was yeah. four or five years ago. But um, when I discovered it, definitely it was like, okay, so totally. it, no, it's more like this is where everyone goes. It's uh, if you want uh-huh. to create yeah. content or, or you want to be photographed, it's like a part of AX that's very beautiful. There's like lush greeneries and then um, the parking lot is there for mm-hmm. dark shoots and then there's the dark tunnels. Shoots. And um, yeah, it was like, it's the thing is that whenever AX happens, usually it's very, mm-hmm. I, I'm not sure how the uh, brotographer alley was in Seattle, but for sure mm-hmm. in AX. And I don't want to kind of, I don't want to go too much into uh, uh, that's fine with AX here, but yeah, there's like each time um, there's that small community in the con. It's mm-hmm. I feel mm-hmm. like that's where the heart is. That's where the core is. Like that's yeah. what uh, makes community. the convention. Yeah. That's Agreed. that's where the true Correct. community yeah. goes. I mean, in terms of media content. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm actually curious. Um, I went to Seattle last year. It was my first time. Or uh, Sakura Con. It was my first time. And um, I'm not mm-hmm. sure whether the place that we were hanging out kim was the uh photographer alley or is that is is that somewhere else i don't remember but most of the time if i'm not at my booth it will probably be the photographer okay. corner it's i'm probably okay. I'm, we were probably there and i was probably there reminiscing uh, of the old times is that the um is <laughs> nice. that this corner before you ex- exit to the gardens yes oh, okay yep. cool that's it. Yeah, so mm-hmm. uh, half of the time I was on that spot because I was 
<laughs> that was full. Yeah. It was nice. like everyone just camped yeah. there. And yeah. It was a lot of fun. I remember at that time, yeah. Tim and I weren't very close yet, but mm-hmm. definitely um, Kim was, you were actually on the other side. That's why I didn't see you as much. You were on the other side of that, of, of that place. Uh, there's this uh, mm-hmm. um, kind of a, um, it's, it, it goes in a loop, right? In, the, in a circle. Kind of, yeah. Kind of, yeah. And then you're on the other side yeah. and then I was on the other wall. And um, I remember you asking for speakers because your speaker. Oh my god, I remember that. <laughs> your speaker died, so I managed to find nice. one. I might, it was funny, so yeah. yeah. Ah dang! I think I nah, bought man. a custom right. speaker or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Man, that sounds like a that sounds like a lit ass story. Um, and I, I want to ask both of you guys more about that. Um, but I think we're gonna cut to a real quick break, real quick. Yeah. yeah. Um. So uh, before we get into the break, uh, obviously that was Kim breaking down a little bit more of you know what soccer con is and what it meant to him. So, uh, mm-hmm. my question for you people that are watching this, uh, have you ever been to soccer con? Mm-hmm. Uh, and second, do you even know about the photography corner that he's talking about? And if you do, uh, send us pictures because I would love to see what it looks like. Uh, if you guys happen to have any pictures too like please send them mm-hmm. over that way i can kind of like pop them in the episode um because like I, I for me personally like i love like secret chill spots yeah <laughs> so uh whenever i get like the inside scoop because you know i've never been to soccer con either yeah. but like if this is the spot to go then shit i want to go mm-hmm. you know what i mean yeah it's so it's um, not so much more of like yeah. secret it's more like this is the spot like this is like the landmark <laughs> like this is where you go if you yeah. want to hang yeah. out with everyone you know and it's definitely chill yeah so Cool. All right. Well, thanks for that. Um, we're going to go on a quick uh, PP break. And then uh, when we come back, we'll dive a little bit more into uh, soccer con, what could have been. So thanks, guys. Yeah. All right. All right, guys. So welcome back. I uh, hope you guys had a good break. How was your break? It was good. <laughs> Sit, yeah. put some water, and uh, <laughs> <it off. laughs> there you go. Nice, oh, you gotta hydrate. Uh, yeah, there you yeah. go. Stay hydrated. I wish we had a, a chat bot that had like a, a stay hydrated thing Ooh, uh, on our seriously. feed. Seriously, maybe, oh, maybe if uh, maybe once we start leveling up, we can start live streaming some episodes, which would be dope. So, yeah, yeah. all right, know, cool. But, so, uh, yeah. oh, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, oh no, I was just gonna say that this. Each time it's like not a good idea. Whenever, <laughs> <laughs> whenever we're, we're wait, was um, that full? Huh? Was that full? It was full. Oh god damn. <laughs> I finished it. So, so now I'm You mean like, to tell me you killed it in 30 minutes? <laughs> yeah. My, I mean my, my, I kind of drink things fast. <laughs> it's been quarantined for too long. <laughs> yeah. Dang. I'm just a little thirsty guys. Don't mind me. <laughs> Man, hashtag, hashtag send Marvin his tea, bro. Oh <laughs> I think that God. should be a meme. We should have people send you tea. So Seriously. if anyone wants to send anyone anything, send send people, uh, send Marvin yeah. like bags of tea and stuff. <laughs> All of it, dude. Like I'll, I will, that's going to be my thing. I'm just going to drink tea instead of, so. no, 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 screw that. I'm going to be drinking soju. <laughs> Yo, what would, is, is there a th- such a, a thing as like tea and soju? Is that a thing? Hey, I'm down to experiment. I'm down to make tea. I am actually then, down too. And then yeah, mix yeah. soju at the same time. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what that tastes like. Because like, I know there's like home remedies for like sore throats with, um, it's like gin and like this herbal tea or whatever mm-hmm. mm-hmm. uh, that my uncle uses in the Philippines. Uh, and it's it's pretty hardcore, tastes gnarly as hell, but it gets the job done. So nice, yeah. Nice. Anyway, just just in case anyone gets sick, you know what I mean. A little hey, little tip, but yeah, I would love to experiment over. with that because I still got <laughs> what the six bottles that we have from last episode that we're all together. Mm-hmm. So um, hashtag I miss you guys. <laughs> so <laughs> all right. So anyways, uh, so continuing with the theme of soccer con, uh, so. You know, before the break, we were talking a little bit about what soccer con, you know, even is it being Mm -hmm. kind of one of the premier West Coast cons and then it being Kim's, you know, one of Kim's first events here, um, you know, in the States. So going back into it, right, like we we figured we figured out what soccer con meant to Kim. And so going fast forwarding into 2020, Mm -hmm. uh, which is today. Uh, soccer, as I'm not sure if you all know, but soccer con was supposed to happen this weekend or as of the time that we're recording this episode. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so Kim, uh, I have a question for you. If you don't mind me asking, do you mind if I ask you this question? Uh, Sure. What's up? (laughs) 
All right. So uh, you definitely, how should I say this? Uh, you expressed your disdain <laughs> yes. for uh, Sakura Khan not happening right now. Mm -hmm. Well, first and foremost, Sakura Khan is always happening. It's happening in our hearts. Yep. Uh, <laughs> um, but for the lack of a live event uh, going on, mm -hmm. uh, why is it that you're so upset that it's not happening right now? Um, and what exactly was supposed to happen? So Sakura Khan, what could have been? Uh, what's the story there? Yeah, so I mean, I... Um had a party planned obviously with with sakura khan and uh, i was trying to apply for a booth too so it was kind of like you know my kickstart to uh, 2020 um but it's also one of yeah. the events that i was looking forward to just so i can catch up with old friends so you know that that's why i was very uh unhappy as to why it cancelled um but mm -hmm. i cannot really blame sakura khan for it because at the end of the day you know they gotta do what they gotta do to make sure everyone's safe True. Um, yeah, of course. Yeah, and there was a lot of people that were okay. actually um, mad about them canceling um, late, and I think that went back oh, yeah. to you know um, our previous episode as to they can't cancel the event; it has to be like uh, the city right. canceling it. So there was a lot of stuff happening yeah. back and forth with them, but you know, at least we were, mm -hmm. we we found out sooner than later. Okay, yeah. so then, so then, oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just say I'm happy that they finally made their decision in regards to that matter. Mm -hmm. um, I feel yeah. like um, <clears throat> a lot, like it goes back to what we're saying that uh, a lot of people are very much um, inconvenienced mm -hmm. uh, because um, they yeah. don't know whether it's a go or not. And then usually it takes time for yeah. vendors, for you know, general attendees to like plan out yeah. these uh, events. And, you know, it's it, it gets tough when when certain things are very uncertain mm -hmm. in that yeah. yeah i get it from True. like the um, attendee standpoint where they book their hotels they book the flights right. they have stuff yeah. planned yeah. um so i get why they're mm -hmm. really upset and same thing with me yeah. like booking a booth the parties yeah. guests all of that but definitely mm -hmm. i feel like once the convention like like decided to cancel it i'm just like okay finally yeah. like we can move on yeah. like yeah have a better life of past the convention yeah yeah and this well i'm much, sure across the board oh sorry go ahead oh no i was just like as much as i as we um we want to celebrate right now and like we're supposed to be celebrating this weekend i know i'm very much sad that it's not too i'm like so ready to turn up with like um, <laughs> with kim i was like i was really expecting yeah um to just celebrate life mm-hmm but yeah. unfortunately, we're in quarantine. Yeah, gotta stay yeah, safe. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, uh, uh, coming from the event operator standpoint, uh, and I'm sure the three of us, and as well as our viewers, understand across the board. I'm sure it wasn't an easy decision mm -hmm. for SakuraCon yeah. to cancel. Uh, I mean, you know, for the most part, when it comes to these large events, uh, a lot of people rely on these events as their main source of income, like it's their livelihood, mm -hmm. and for them to pull the plug on it. Um, you know, half the time, probably not even by choice, uh, even and even if it is by choice, uh, it's out of the safety and well-being of their attendees, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, again, good on them for making the decision. Again, it was just personally, I think it's just shitty timing because, you know, around like the this period of time that we're in right now is we're in the shit of the coronavirus mm -hmm. at this moment. Yeah, and we're peak right now. you know it, it's it's roughly been about I don't know a, a few weeks, three weeks to a month now uh, that you know kind of across the board all around the world there's been self quarantining mm -hmm. uh, being implemented you know and it's government entities saying it so um, I, I personally think it's just shitty timing now th I think there's definitely a discussion to be said for upcoming events such as you know the San Diego Comic Cons Anime Expos mm -hmm. uh, and I feel like that's a whole nother mm -hmm. realm of what we were getting of what we're going to get into as far as projection for coronavirus yeah. 2020 looking like kind of fucking with our events but let's kind of get back on track with um if you know let's just say uh for instance that this pandemic was not going on and if under normal circumstances um this event were to be going on right mm -hmm. um let's dial it back to the foundation of 
or kind of the root of what I want to ask, which is um, this project, when you announced it, I was like, holy crap. Um, I remember yeah. you'd mentioned it to myself and Marvin in our group yeah. chat very briefly. Um, you couldn't really talk about it too much because I think you were still talking to your partner. Uh, it's David, yeah. I think. Yeah. And um, so first and foremost, have you had you ever partnered with anyone in the past when it came to um, to any of your events? And I guess what's the significance or wh why did why even find a partner to yeah. begin with? So um, previously in the past, I have worked uh, with you know other people to host events, um, mm. you know for multiple reasons. But um, sure. you know with with David, um, the reason why I wanted to work with him because he had certain traits and aspects as to what I didn't have. Um, mm. So I believe like that something that something that creates a good partnership is to be able to offer something that the other can't provide. You know, with David, he's a very sure. good negotiator. Sure. He's uh, very strict and straight to the point, uh, very business oriented. And uh, the same thing with me, like I'm very business oriented, but I don't really negotiate as hard as he does. And uh, mm. with finances, he's very, um, he's very on point as well. So I would like to pick up some of his traits. And that's the reason why sure. we work together. Okay. Um, and what's, what's David's background in the space? Uh, tell me, tell me to kind of, you know, if, if it's too personal or anything, but, um, you know, what's, what's David's background in the space or like kind of in the industry yeah. that got you to want to build this partnership with him? Yeah. So we actually met because one of our mutuals recommended us to each other because we had similar interests. You know, we were into cars, mm. we we're into conventions and cosplay, hey. we we're into business, we we're hey. into parties. Hey. So it just made sense for us to kind of just hang out, you know, uh, with each other. And then I just realized we had so much in common that, you know, this, this okay. shouldn't be just a waste. Um, sure. Yeah. I don't know if okay. that answered your yeah. question. I totally forgot your question. Uh, no, 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 that, that, that did, that yeah, did. Yeah. Um, I'm actually mainly... really curious because um, when you announced that, I'm just like, holy crud, I know you're like, big into like throwing parties mm -hmm. but um and usually when you do it um you usually host parties um uh, kind of in a sense it's like every, you know though i know how you are and you've said it before you're kind of like last minute about everything mm -hmm. and it's like when you announce that you're doing a nine mm -hmm. city party it's like how did that yeah. be? like how like who proposed that idea and like how did that came to be yeah so um, that's a good question you know that wouldn't have been possible without david he was the one who kind of reached out to um uh, this agency to work together with us to start hosting parties so um it wouldn't have been possible without him nice hell yeah, yeah. um Okay, so going back into David, and well, the whole reason why I wanted to bring up David is one, I just wanted to shout him out. Shout out, David. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've never Sexy personally boy. met him before. Uh, I don't know what his, uh, I don't know how involved he is in the scene, like personally, but mm -hmm. you know, if, obviously, if Kim's vouching for him, you know, he's, he's a force to be reckoned with. So um, going back into it, then again, going back to kind of the business fundamentals of, of this, um, going into, kind of Kim's business mentality. Um, and this is just based on what I know about you, Kim, mm -hmm. which is uh, you have very, very, a very specific vision that not a lot of people can see. And whenever it comes to, you know, creating a partnership with someone, whether that be bus in business, uh, finance, events, yeah. uh, et cetera, you know, I feel like there are pros and cons to, um, to, uh, I guess, having a joint project with a partner. Mm -hmm. So my question to you is, is um, you know, because you're, you are well-versed in, you know, collaborating with partners in the past, mm -hmm. uh, what do you feel are the pros and cons of a partnership uh, in this sense, especially when it comes to these events? Yeah, so again, with partnership, you know, we have to be able to offer something that the other does not have, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, we're trying to find somebody to partner up with you. You have to figure out what your weaknesses are and if they're able to satisfy that and elevate you to the next level. A partnership sure. shouldn't happen if you're not going to grow from where you're at. That's, that's what I believe. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, in, like, in a sense, like the way I do it with not just business partners, but with maybe my artists as well. I tell them, um, you know, what are you looking for with 
um, working with me and my brand? Are you looking for of course. growth in your you know, you know, your skill base? Are you looking to make money, or what are you looking for? You know, and if I yeah, you're setting the expectations. expectations, laying everything out on the table, and that way, um, yeah. they know what I want, and I know what they want, and if we're mm-hmm. able to both satisfy each other, then let's go, let's make shit happen. Mm. Yeah, because I don't That's want like yeah. I don't want them to be able to offer me something. And I'm not able to offer yeah. them anything, right? If there's no mutual benefit, then mm-hmm. that you know, let's just move on our way and hope for the best for you. Sure. Mm-hmm. So I, I guess uh, a, a part two to that question, then, and I think Marvin has a question. Um, so a follow up to that then is so based on your relationship with David, mm-hmm. what do you feel you could learn from him, right? Because again, the whole point of this podcast is to yeah. Um, do two things, educate as well as kind of track like our progress. Mm -hmm. So given your current level of skill when it comes to the event planning space, uh, what type of things do you feel that you could learn from David personally? Not to gas him up too much, um, (laughs) but you know, I guess go ahead and gas our our, our, our boy up. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, number one is negotiation with um, working with let's say venues and all of that. Usually with me, I personally say yes to the first number or offer I see. Um, and with David, I've learned to kind of understand my position in places. I feel like he knows my worth more than I do, if that makes sense. Wow. Okay. And he kind of brings yeah. that to light as like, yo, Kim, do you know who you are? Like, you should be asking for more. Yeah. Like, they're, they're, they're lowballing you. And uh, it kind of took me a while to kind of realize and understand that I do have, you know, some sort of power in this scene and that I shouldn't just mm-hmm. kind of throw that out there. Yeah. And uh, another yeah, part, that's, yeah. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Another part is being frugal with um, finances. For me, like I love mm. just you know, spoiling friends and throwing free stuff and just whatever. Right. You know, that's just the, in, in my nature to just, you know, be giving. But one take thing care I, of people. Yeah. But one thing I learned from David, but and other people is for me to be able to take care of others. I need to make sure that I take care of myself, whether that's um, you know my finances or also my health. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Nice. Um, you you covered a lot there mm-hmm. um, that I could further break down because uh, this is kind of. It's it's funny because I feel like with you being like I I see you being as like the crown jewel <laughs> of like what what people are trying to uh like trying to feast their eyes on, yeah. and I feel like what David is is un because you you broke it down perfectly, which is understanding your worth, right? Mm-hmm. Um, for us, for the three of us being kind of small business owners slash entrepreneurs, like it's really hard, especially in the beginning to understand your value. Yeah. And a lot of times we either do it, you know, under we either undersell ourselves mm-hmm. or do it for um, little to no money. And that's mainly the passion side kicking in. Mm-hmm. But I feel like the dynamic of you and David in the event space, uh, and I feel like one of the benefits to a partnership or one of the pros uh, is understanding leverage, right? Mm-hmm. Because when it comes to negotiating one of you, like this is what, uh, for instance, this is what Ryan and I do at Cross Counter. Uh, we leverage each other's experiences as well as like um, uh, each other's skills mm-hmm. whenever we're negotiating with clients to host events. Yeah. So for instance, the event that I brought you guys out to uh, last August for Evo, yeah. uh, that was a push pull between me and, um, uh, me and Ryan with uh, with Caesars Corporate, because we were going back and forth. It's like, okay, what should we value ourselves? We don't really know. And we're like, all right, mm-hmm. cool. It's literally like another bar fights, but like for a whole day. Mm-hmm, yeah. And so, you know, I said, dude, like we need to be charging this. And Ryan's like, I don't know. And I was like, dude, let's charge this. And he's like, all right, cool. Mm-hmm. And because of that, we were able to cover like just just the, um, and I don't want to get too specific in the profit margin, but um, it pretty much covered like 75% of our expenses uh, at Evo. Mm-hmm which was wow. a, quite a substantial amount for us. Um, so yeah, Marvin, did you have a question that you wanted to ask uh, Kim in that regard? Yeah, I mean, I guess I just want to add into what you said in a sense that, and I guess to add um, Kim's uh, statement as well, is that it's very difficult to find your value when you're just first starting up. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. uh, it usually takes a uh, third person to see, to see uh, your, your worth yeah. because um, yeah. usually... Like I was talking to um, 
to Anthony about this earlier um, when he asked me, um, like, who are like uh, rather. Um, he asked me who I looked up to in, in the beginning. I know this is like a little bit off topic here, mm-hmm. but the point of the matter no, it's is not. that <clears throat> the point of the matter is that um, I looked up to everyone who was a lot better than me in in photography, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. the thing is that when I say that, oh my god, this person is like really, really good, a lot of those people are in the same path or in the same kind of like mentality where like, oh, I'm not all that. I'm just, I'm, I'm not something special. And like, it's just common kind of um, mentality. Like you won't really know until almost everyone is saying that mm-hmm. to you. you. You won't really know until yeah. someone who's who you look up to say that so you like hey you are the shit you're the shit <laughs> you're it's like they, they lay everything it. down on the table they sit mm-hmm. you down and like yeah. hey do you know you did this this and this and this is what right. you like the effect you had <laughs> you know it's kind of like what david yeah. did with me was that when he wrote like um you know um business proposals to other events mm-hmm. he's like yeah senpai squad did this did this did this and they have right. this available mm-hmm. yeah. and i'm like holy shit like I never like it. Just, <laughs> damn, I, d- damn, yeah. I didn't do that. Like, yeah. Yeah, you know? So I yeah. think it takes like a third perspective to kind of lay down on the table yeah. as to what you've really yeah. done and can do. Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. And that's actually, um, we're going, getting to a really, really good point here for our listeners in a sense that, you know, when you're working, always like do your best to know where you stand, mm-hmm. not in just mm-hmm. your, your niche. But in yeah. in terms of your progress and how how much you're you're uh, evolving as an artist or an, as an entrepreneur or as a business person, mm-hmm. and then yeah. um, uh, use your experience or yeah or everything that you've done in the past to give yourself a little bit of a leverage in terms of negotiating because some of you guys like don't know like. A lot of you guys are really, really, really good already, mm-hmm. and like super undercharging yourself, and that's like yeah. a really, really common thing in the art industry. Exactly. In, yeah. In the um, um, not business, but rather um, um, trying to remember the 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 word here, freelancers, mm-hmm. right? So if you're a freelancer, mm-hmm. you're like a lot of freelancers just undercharge themselves, yeah. but. Sure, there's like some of uh, people where they're overcharged, but you know, it's the bottom line is that figure out what you're worth, right? And then try it out. And if it doesn't succeed, like for quite some time, then maybe you are overcharging yourself. But if it yeah. does succeed, then you just find out mm-hmm. how much you're worth. And that's very important to your growth. Mm-hmm. Very true. Yeah. So, so I, I feel like to kind of help sum that up, uh, it feels like the the dynamic that both you and uh, David have, Kim, um, are is it it feels like David is filling in the gap of uh, what's called business development needs. Mm-hmm. So, for instance, a lot of the negotiating skills, as well as like the evaluation of what what uh, he feels Senpai Squad is worth, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and I feel like he he for lack of a better term like explained it better like better sold you on that yeah. than i feel like i did in me wanting to start this podcast <laughs> with you because <laughs> i gas you motherfuckers up all the time and i'm like yo guys like y- you do know your hot shit right mm-hmm. and then again both because both of you guys are the badasses that you are it's like no no like you guys take the humble approach but i'm like bitch i seen it from the third part yeah. like the, the, like the outside <laughs> like i see what you guys do and this is the value that you've done mm-hmm. kim do you realize senpai squad has done this this and this right it's like, hell yeah, dude, fucking, da- man, shout out to fucking David, man. We need him on the pod someday. <laughs> Better hit that full hell up. Because yeah. I'm serious. Like, I, I want to figure out, like, what he had to tell you to get to get you on board. Because yeah. he obviously did something right in seeing, in helping you see the value in what, what you have to offer. Yeah. In what Senpai Squad as a brand and as a marketing entity mm-hmm. has to offer to this agency, these events, um, to where they would want to leverage a partnership with you, right? Yeah. And t- tell me if I'm wrong. Yeah, I mean, so it... So basically, it wasn't all like David came up to me or I came up to David as to like wanting to start this partnership. Honestly, I think it was more naturally. It just naturally happened, you know, yeah. as to like we both did the same stuff and then he helped me out with this and I was more involved with what he wanted to do. And then in the of end, course. I was like, 
should we just technically call this a partnership because that's pretty much <laughs> what it is, you know? So yeah. it just naturally happened. Yeah. It wasn't like, hey, David, like, I need this from you. Or Kip David was like, hey, Kim, like, blah, blah, blah. It mm. was just naturally happened. Yeah. That's, yeah, yeah, and I, I feel, feel like those are the best partnerships. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah. I just watched the uh, the Social Network, the Facebook movie the other day, mm-hmm. and it's mm-hmm. the same thing. Like it's it's an organic, natural integration of two powerhouses coming together. Yeah, uh, and, and and creating something dope. So, um, yeah, I, yeah. I kind of wanted to ask you a little bit about um, your standards of like how you plan like events and stuff. But I think Marvin had a, a question or a follow up point. Yeah. Oh no, no, I was just I was just gonna agree with you, and I was just gonna make this point. <laughs> But, nice, you know, thanks. you already beat me to it. But I think that's a good question you're just coming up right now. Um, I actually am yeah, very yeah. curious as well as to this upcoming question then. Yeah, yeah so the the, qu- <laughs> the next question I want to ask you before we go on our, our next break um, and to kind of feel, to bring it home is uh, myself and Marvin both know that you are very particular about the level of quality you put into your work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um how do I have the balls to say that to your face, Kim? <laughs> is because I have seen you have crashed here at my house several times, and I have seen you work. Yeah. Like literally, it does not stop. You so a normal. So if you guys don't know what a normal soju bomb recording session is, uh, in the pre-coronavirus world, is uh, the three of us would congregate here in Vegas. We'd typically have like dinner, um, start drinking a lot. <laughs> 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 And then we'd be like, all right, cool. Let's turn on the cameras and start talking about shit, right? Yeah. And we would get into it. And so as soon as the podcast is done, literally each of us starts working on stuff. So I'll probably either start catching up on like messages and missed emails uh, and then start editing. Um, of course, Marvin will go into like his deep, deep, deep editing mode. Like he'll like be super focused. Uh, and then Kim will either knock out or start doing stuff. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, because of that, like, uh, I've had the unique pleasure of, I guess, in essence, being a fan with access, Mm -hmm. seeing how both of these guys operate, uh, behind the scenes. Uh, and in particular, Kim in this sense, because he literally wakes up and just goes. So, you know, I've, I've asked him a couple times, you know, whenever he's doing stuff, I'm like, huh, how can you do it that way? And he breaks it down. Well, it's, it's very hard for me to like trust like other people to understand like what this is. And I'm like, well, what is it? Like verbalize it with me. Mm-hmm. And so Kim and I have gone back and forth, uh, about uh, talking about the value of his vision and what quality means to him. So yeah. in the instance of this particular event, right? Mm-hmm. What are your standards for plan, planning an event of this caliber? Because, I know, I know you, you know, Mm -hmm. because you're such a stickler for quality uh, and quality of time, as well as like the marketing component of it. Um, it, it, it seems very unlikely that you would seek out help or seek out a partnership if it wasn't like a big project. Right. So, um, again, going into the question, what, what are your standards for planning this type of event, um, that would require a partnership? Yeah. Um, Hmm. Good question. I mean, <laughs> nice. I got him. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, again, like this, this, these type of events wouldn't have happened um, if it wasn't for David. So I do appreciate him being able to reach out to these companies to help find the venues and all of that. But the one yeah. thing that I have a very uh, high standard on is having confidence in selling out a show. Um, which yeah. is, I don't know if other event organizers have this type of you know thing as to like you need we need to sell out otherwise we're not going to throw the show but yeah like in my philosophy i think one bad event doesn't make up to like five or ten good events um if that makes sense interesting like a um, sold out show does look good but if you have like a bad show like where you only have 40 percent of tickets sold then it will take so much longer to kind of recoup from that l- loss or like the bad image. If yeah. That makes sense. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. It's, it's so interesting that you see it that way because uh, like for instance, on the event side, on my end of things being like a con runner, mm-hmm. uh, I've only ever sold out one 
actual con and it was fucking insane like yeah. we sold out the first two hours of the con and we like we spent the first day like all of the staff that wasn't doing anything like just making new badges <laughs> because we were just wow. straight up out of like our shit uh, it was pretty hype it was the most amount of money we made mm -hmm. and i was like holy crap like this is what it's like right <laughs> and so being addicted to that hype i was like okay so i i personally can see the value in that mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. has has the 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 selling out the event always been a priority you since the beginning like how like how what's what's the what's the reasoning for that right like why is that such an important component of of your events right yeah. obviously you know you explained uh kind of like the pr side of it where it's like well it's hard to recover if the event isn't popular mm -hmm. but when when did you start having that mentality in your event planning career so back in the day i used to do like warehouses and hotel parties and naturally they were all full like there was no time where they were just like 80 percent full it was always packed it damn must always, be nice yeah so i had <laughs> yeah, the luxury yeah. of you know having that kind of leverage um so i don't want to backtrack with this like success that i've already have like sure. Sepah squad is okay. always known since from day one to sell out to always be full to always have a high demand to always you know yeah be successful so i yeah never really had that mindset going to throw parties but now that mm -hmm. i'm going to work with bigger companies i need to start having that mindset so it kind of yeah. happened on the way but it wasn't it wasn't my goal on day one yeah gotcha. so yeah so sh so I mean, shout out to all his competitors which is like you know, <laughs> like this this yeah. is what it takes like you know and honestly honestly like not to gas you up or anything like this is these are the traits of excellence i feel mm -hmm. right like this is what i feel makes you successful obviously in the beginning of your event career um you know it was something that happened naturally mm -hmm. but now you know businesses are getting involved and more parties uh, are getting involved and where it's essentially a bigger better better mm -hmm. um you know, you obviously have to start tracking this and actually making it a focus and a goal. Mm -hmm. So I always like, I always find it interesting when, you know, and th th this is the beauty of like small businesses, right? Because these are exciting times. Y you're figuring out, okay, what Senpai Squad is something that's cool, that's hip, like that's something yeah. <laughs> that shows how boomer I am. I'll call it hip. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like it's, it's something that's, co that's cool and dope that people want to go to, mm -hmm. right? And so I guess in essence, what you've done is you figured out how to turn that into a business. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, all these things that are happening to you, you know, these partnerships, working with agencies and planning for like bigger events, I feel like are healthy signs of growth mm -hmm. uh, and show the trajectory of, you know, where, where Senpai Squad is headed, at least in the event space, not even talking about Senpai Squad as the as the apparel brand, streetwear brand, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And Again, it's I, I. Again, I'm I'm the lucky motherfucker that gets to sit, you know, like <laughs> not 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 like a shotgun, but like, you know, like it's like a van. I'm like in the third row. <laughs> I'm like, hey, that's that's fucking tight, yo. Yeah, like keep it going, kid. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that, that's how I feel right now. I was like, damn, I'm I'm seeing this yeah. shit. Yeah. And that's why I wanted to bring this up this in this particular episode because it's like, fuck, it was supposed to happen now. Yeah. Like it. It's it, this is what. It was supposed to build up to and that's why i feel like you know one i think this is therapy session for all of us <laughs> like putting out our frustrations of like what could have been mm -hmm. but uh also to giving the takeaway of like well dude look like because it's not like our minds have changed it's not like our business mentalities have changed it's just now we're stuck at home mm -hmm. so you know given that you've got more time now uh, you know and the fact that you rescheduled it to next year i'm just excited as fuck for that like holy shit like yeah. now you have even more, more time, time to, to plan prepare, it yeah yeah more time to prepare it's gonna be even more yeah. lit mm -hmm. um but no pressure because i know you're gonna put that pressure on yourself kim yeah. but <laughs> you know but honestly I, I feel like that's that's where we're going to and i feel like that's the proper takeaway or at least the healthy takeaway mm -hmm. um versus being sad and depressed about it because again you know obviously this is business for you this is your livelihood mm -hmm. um but what can you do about it right yeah. and i feel like you know, your positive mentality of just go, 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 do, do, do is heavily seen in how you're approaching this. So yeah. um, we're going to go on a, a, a quick break in a little bit. But Marvin, do you have any other points? Yeah, um, I'm very much curious because um, I know Kim has, you know, become like this number one party scene nah, organizer nah, slash nah. like, yeah, you know, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like <laughs> yeah. that's how it is. It's like it's to the point where um, like there's um 
there's a reason why your your um your shows and events are always sold out. And maybe mm-hmm. one thing I'm really curious about is what separates your shows from the rest. Rather, what makes your show so special? I mean, I know I've seen it, but I feel like mm-hmm. wow, like coming from your perspective, I'd like to hear it. Yeah, you know. So yeah. for me, uh, one thing I pride myself about is to create like a event which has a very you know positive and unique experience. So I like one thing that I ask myself all the time is will this show make people go off social media at parties? So if you see somebody on Facebook at my party, that means I failed. You know? Wow. So I want that's good. I want there to be taking notes like activities i want there to be entertainment i want there to be you know photo booths so much things at my event to the point where they put their phones down mine is taking photos and videos that make sense but you know for them to actually in, indulge in all these activities at my shows so that's God the one thing damn, I, I think I, that's the secret sauce yeah <laughs> <laughs> damn thanks for sharing because that's that is so i don't know any and again, not to gas you up, Kim, mm-hmm. but I don't know anyone with that mentality of how detailed. It's not even. A, it's not even a detail. It's it's an over. It's a vibe. It's a fucking hashtag vibe check twenty twenty. Mm-hmm. Like literally, it is that right there. I feel like is going to be the the defining factor. Uh, and again, you know, obviously, since you just shared it, you know, people are going to know. But can they execute it? Yeah, you know what I mean. And I feel like you you're the only one that really can because you have so many different elements. Um to your planning, to just the, I would say overall programming, because you think of all the activities, yeah. right? Um, in, in making it uh, essentially uh, an IRL or like a cap, like live in the moment. Like you literally are in capture, like encapsulating living in yeah. the moment at your parties and at your events. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, my philosophy is like the people that can capitalize on, on the things that affect us the most, which is sentimentality, living in the moment, you know what I mean? Uh, romance, love, stuff like that. Like the unique things that businesses pay, I'm telling you, fucking millions of dollars to like R&D and research and figure out how to implement. Mm-hmm. Like, I think the people that can figure out how to do that win. Yeah. So again, not to, not to toot your own horn, not to, <laughs> <laughs> not to put any pressure on you, but like, again, you're, you're fucking killing it right now. So um, any other points before we go on break? Uh, nope, that's the only one secret sauce I'll let out for this episode. No, <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> no, it's good, it's good. Uh, well, th- yeah. honestly, thank you. And again, like, it's, I-, I hope it's inspiring for people because, like, legit, like, this is, this is the stuff, mm-hmm. you know? And again, I-, I-, I will say this very boldly. I'm confident in saying this. Like, yeah, pe- people will now know about it, but can they, can they even pull it off, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So, uh, anyways, so, going into our break right uh a couple takeaways that i want you guys to talk about maybe comment or 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 dm us at which is uh are any of these things that kim said true like have you been to any of his parties like have you have you felt like um the experience that kim creates like is that stuff uh that he's been able to accomplish right um, I've asked one in a many friends uh, that have been to your parties, uh, myself included, where it's like, holy crap, like this is different. Mm-hmm. So yeah. um, drop in the comments, like what your experience yeah. at, at Kim's or, events are like and what you want, uh, wh- what, you, what you would hope out of, um, you know, uh, a SakuraCon 2021 type party uh, to be like. Yeah, to add uh, on to Anthony, I want to ask like the viewers, it's like, what's the most lit thing you guys did at Anthony or at Kim's party, <laughs> by yeah. party. Yeah, I want to see that yeah. in the comments section because I know I have plenty, but I want to see your guys. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, hell yeah. Nice. All right, cool. All right. Um, so we're going to go and jump on a couple minute break and then we'll be right back. Sweet. Thanks, guys. No one can do it like you. Well, welcome back, everybody. Um, so, <laughs> in the first couple parts, we were, you know, uh, going on with the theme of Sakura Khan and uh, some some secret, some nuggets, a lot of solid takeaways. Marvin, I don't know about you, but uh, I I definitely learned a lot from Kim just in the, in, in that last segment. Uh, I feel like yeah. he shared a lot of very very specific things that are good for people wanting to learn more about the business side of things. Um, mm-hmm. 
but as as everyone knows we're not all business uh we like to have a good time and so Look, talking there's, there's there's something apart from business god damn, I didn't yeah. know. <laughs> damn that exists <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dang, what's that like? <laughs> so, uh, so talking about soccer con uh, of what could have been, right? Um, mm-hmm. I, I want to ask both of you guys. You know, obviously this is a uh, a big deal for Kim. So, my question to both of you guys uh, is what what are your favorite moments um, or people or relationships uh, that sh- mm-hmm. that you've experienced at soccer con uh, in years past? Mm-hmm. Um. Should I go, Marvin? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, as I mentioned, like my favorite usually is the photographer corner, and that's back when I started. Yeah. Uh, honestly, back in the day was kind of hazy for me, so I don't remember much. Sure. But something that was recent, like I went SacroCon last year to a uh, vent, so I was at the exhibit hall. Mm. Um, and then after we closed for the day, mm-hmm. I was, you know, I had two grocery bags full of soju bottles. <laughs> And That's I'm here like does. strolling around trying to go to the photographer corner. I want to see my boys. Yeah. You know, Typical Kim. The old times. <laughs> I shit you not, one of the bags just fucking gave up and all my soju bottles oh. ended up just all over the floor. <gasps> oh, and just, fuck. You know, it was, a, it was a shit show. So, oh, what a know, tragedy. The, the, the nice guy I am, I didn't ignore it. You know, so yeah. I, I, I walked Good. around to try and find a, a security or a staff to, you know, bring it upon the attention. Yeah. And I'm still trying to walk around and find someone. And somebody came up to me and I realized it was my friend. And he was like, hey, Kim, <laughs> just by chance, are those soju bottles on the floor yeah. yours? And I'm like, well, how did you know? <laughs> <laughs> what do you ask? So, so, who else so could it be? <laughs> Yeah, who who, who, who else would it have been? Of course. <laughs> yeah. Damn. It's your boy came in. Out so much. How many bo- like, how many you know bottles what? were in the bag? Like it must have been a heavy ass bag, or like was it single ply? Did they double bag it? Like what I, was the? I it definitely wasn't double bagged. I think it was at least ten bottles. Oh no! Not, Jeez. not all of them broke. Only, I think like maybe four of them broke or five. Uh, you know, that's still but, a lot. Know, it was still a lot. Yeah. Oh yeah. But, um, it made a difference. Yeah, I, and then at that moment, I realized I had a problem. No. <laughs> because if, if somebody no, came up to me asking if those soju bottles are mine, yeah. and then I have a goddamn problem. <laughs> so oh that God. was a, a funny recent moment of uh, SacroCon for me. Ah, oh, damn. Um, yeah, that's and, crazy, uh, dude. And, I mean, another one was uh, just an interesting situation. So for my you know, last year again, I, I had the booth, right? Yeah. Um, so I take payment through Square, mm-hmm. and uh. Uh, usually conventions charge a lot of money for Wi-Fi. So yeah. the cheap ass I am, I didn't buy Wi-Fi. So <laughs> every transaction, I would have to like hold my phone up, <laughs> wait maybe two or three minutes for the transaction to go through. Holy right? crap! But then I found, out, I found out uh, about the um, offline mode, so it would the offline mode would instantly save the information. Yeah. But it won't process it until you get signal. Yeah. Right? So I was doing the offline mode and I was doing like five transactions at a time. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, what if they all just fail? Like, <laughs> end, you know? And I'm like, that's a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. So I kind of th- thought of a, uh, you know, a kind of a way to prevent that so sure i told my uh, staff hey i'm legit going to run outside the convention <laughs> just so i can get signal <laughs> to process and then off. run my ass back <laughs> <laughs> and i should you not the exhibit hall is on the other side of the co- the complete opposite side of the convention holy crap and to get outside is like the other end so i'm like this is gonna be a mission. Oh, I'm I'm a I'm a pretty I navigate my way through crowds very well. Back nice. then, as a videographer, I had photo shoots back to back to back yeah. to back. Right, so I'm yeah. always on the move. <laughs> so I kind of you know had my way of like maneuvering through crowds. But I was like, all right, you handle the booth for a good five minutes. Make sure it doesn't burn down. I'll see you in five. So yeah. I'm running with my phone. And then I run my ass back um, yeah. because the reason why I was scared was I actually had two transactions that 
declined. Mm. Oh. Um, and uh, that basically is because they didn't have enough money in their bank account. Uh, so I didn't want them to like keep buying stuff and kind of abusing the system. So I sure. wanted to just make sure. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's definitely important. Holy yeah. crap. Uh, so yeah. As, as, as a vendor in the past too, that was definitely an issue. Connectivity issues. And yeah, honestly, I I think the conspiracy side of, side of me thinks like that's done on purpose. <laughs> because dude, think about it. These large convention halls and these hotels and shit, like they want to charge you for their their internet packages, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. um, you know, and and it sucks <laughs> because like as an event operator yeah. too, like because we understand vendors need that stuff. Uh, the the mm-hmm. the two main things that vendors ask us a lot for are uh, is there free Wi Fi and electricity. <laughs> Yeah. yeah and literally like those are the two main things so i can totally empathize with you and yeah. i mean again that's that's crazy how you handle that yeah yeah, yeah. Dude, that's pretty crazy and it's pretty funny too i can just see kim kim just like zooming through oh my god it's awful <laughs> like it's, <laughs> it's just like his hand like ah. I mean, you, probably, you probably saw me run around i'm you know yeah dude I'm, yeah. I'm you're always doing nasty. crazy i mean like one of the story that uh kim and i shared for um Soccer con. I know, like this is like when me and Kim weren't as close yet, but <clears throat> he came up to the to me at like photographer corner. I was like, "Hey, Marvin, it's like, um, do you have a speaker I could borrow?" And oh I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> like <"Bro, laughs> "What happened to your speakers?" It was just like I think your reason was just like, "Oh, like I think I blew out my speaker because I was playing too hard." <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> "Oh my god!" We probably uh, ran out of yeah. battery, so I think yeah. one of the reasons there was yeah, I told my staff, "Hey." hold the booth for five minutes. I'm going to run out and find someone with a speaker. <laughs> and I knew the photographer corner was the best area because I know yeah. someone is probably playing music out there. And no, I was going to be like, hey, uh, can I borrow your speaker for the day? I'll give you like a hundred bucks or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, I actually um, told you my homeboy. Oh, shout out to him. If I could shout out someone. It's yeah, um, go for it. M Dumb Photography. Um, hey. that's his um oh. that's his instagram and nice. then um he was the guy who had two um speakers like big speakers. ass speakers yes. yeah <laughs> i think i used it yeah 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 I yeah, think yeah. I used his. yeah so nice. i told him I'm like hey king it's a uh, speaker like check like go to his booth because he really needs it <laughs> he's his <laughs> lifestyle <laughs> depended on it <laughs> Oh my god! So that's uh, that's our little interaction. How, with how are people gonna find our booth if there's no music, right? <laughs> Absolutely. No, exactly. It's like, such a big event. How are they gonna? How are you gonna stand yeah. out, right? Whenever yeah, you go damn. to a convention, just like find or just pay attention to music. You know, that's how you, that's how you can find senpai <laughs> senpai me, squad yeah. booth. You find me faster by listening for the music than to reach me out through DMs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You're so bad at that, Kim. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Damn. I, honestly, I, I wish I had a soccer con story, but I've never been sad face. So uh, that's yeah, why I wanted to. Yeah. yeah to next year. To the, con- yeah. to the cons. Yeah. Um, but I mean, you know, the fact that you guys are talking about it and it's. Like it's get man, dude. I hadn't really thought about like cons or events throughout kind of this whole pandemic until now, <laughs> because yeah. I, I think what it is for me and the whole reason why I wanted to bring this up in this episode is because like it's like man, what could have been, you know? Yeah. And the fact that you guys put a lot of thought and a, a lot of time into planning this stuff out like really makes it a tragedy that it's not happening right now, you know? Oh yeah. Uh, in in another universe, in another timeline, um, the three of us would probably be in Sucker Con having a, a good ass time or what is it? 10 30 on yeah. a Sunday, probably blacked out by now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, right. But oh, it's yeah. Sunday night. Yeah. It's Sunday night. So Kim would have figured something out. I think <laughs> yeah. oh, we'd probably yeah. be on our way home, but we would have probably been hangover. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably. Uh, yeah. I, I know I would have been doing something probably FGC related. Like I, I would have, I probably would have kicked it with you guys, and then may, maybe met up with like uh, some fighting game cats uh, with Ryan out there because uh, he and I were talking mm-hmm. about soccer con this year too. So yeah. all right, cool. Uh, were there any other points before we wrap it up? Uh, no, that's pretty good. I actually want to go just um, shout out to. There's actually one more person. It's like shout out to this amazing cosplayer person. Her name is Lexi Chu. Just made me remember that she actually booked me three days in a row for Sakura Kong oh, last year. Shit. God bless wow. her. Yeah, she's so sweet. Um, 
I ended up oh, basically yeah. inviting her. her to my parties and um she's one of those uh, people who I meet at convention and just very down to earth and been really really like had positive experience ever since and um would love to hopefully yeah. after this pandemic to you know hang out with her next yeah. next to you and um and for the most part um yeah I had a really pleasant time at soccer con last year and i really wish mm-hmm. it happened this year because um, yeah mm-hmm. again lots of plans i know kim is like really devastated and he wasn't able to kick start it but at the same time it's like man just charging a spirit bomb next year yeah just charging a spirit yeah. bomb at this point you know what i mean so that's all it yeah, is yeah. man you know that's what's yeah. up it's good stuff good. yeah it's all good uh yeah, uh, I think we're doing pretty good on time. Uh, we're at hour twenty six, so we're our pacing's yeah. getting a lot better. <laughs> I feel yeah, like which is, good. which is good. Straight to the point. You know, yeah, like straight the to the point. Stuff. Yeah, no, this yeah. is good. That's why we pre plan this stuff. So like cool. Uh, all right, so a couple things. Uh, so first things first, we're getting a, a, a we're getting good results with like these call to actions and stuff. Like nice, people yeah. have actually sent the secret pass. <laughs> passwords which is funny <laughs> as hell the first one yeah. is super funny because we know that person and we're like i mean we obviously know You're who you're so getting your easy. selfie from right uh <laughs> and then the second person uh marvin was telling me about them so i was like oh man like this is pretty cool so um yeah. <laughs> i know i norm- i know i normally think of the uh the contest ideas do you guys happen to have anything in mind uh that can help us out because uh the last time the last episode um we were talking about uh, kind of boosting up our Apple podcast stuff because I don't Mm -hmm. know if you guys know, we get, I think it's like 38% of our audio listeners on Apple podcasts. So yeah. So the thing is, is like, we haven't done nothing to promote any of like our audio stuff, like nothing. I haven't done shit other than just include the links and stuff. So the Mm -hmm. fact that we have like people listening on there, like I'm like, Oh man, it's tight. Oh, that's a big thing. That's yeah, cool. it's pretty tight. So, um, do you happen to have any any I don't know, challenges for these cats uh, that you have in all mind I to know, help kind of get get ooh. some buzz going? Yeah, well, all I know is that we now have our chibis. Thank you to Alyssa <laughs> Brazil. Yay. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool. Knows, yeah. So, uh, Anthony, dudes. I don't know, like if um if you want to do like um uh kind of a scavenger hunt or um. Oh, what somewhere I, in the video or Screen, what, whatever shot, it is that you do video. right yeah or, okay yeah and then i mean honestly, I'll, no, I'll, can... I, I'll throw i'll throw in the chibis in in the frame and i was thinking about throwing them yeah, in yeah, the yeah. intros and outros <laughs> no, yeah. no don't tell them don't, oh. no, don't 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 tell them and the winner that like, basically whoever finds it in the frame of this video <laughs> and oh, okay so us. they have to screenshot it yeah. Okay, so they had yeah. to screenshot it and then DM it to us. Okay, okay. Right. Ooh, yeah, I like that. So, That's so fucking smart. LB, oh, so, to get. <laughs> so I could troll the, the shit out of that too, make it like chibis, tiny. Our chibis will be in this video. Yeah. Yes. Somewhere. Somewhere. Randomly, Somewhere. Yes. And you yep. need to find it. <laughs> yep. So I'm, you I'm, need to be able to watch this entire thing or yeah. not. <laughs> In order for you to find it. <laughs> okay, so, I, and w- what, I'll, what I'll do is I'll throw it in the intro too. Like, all right, we have a special thing going. So yeah, that way when, yeah. pe- when people tune in, they're like, oh, dang, what? Hey, there you go. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, tight. Think, what's, the pri- well, what's the prize? What's the prize? I think what we can do is we can print out uh, stickers of it. We can print Ooh. out multiple ones and then we can send it yeah. to them. Hell That's yeah. Like very first <laughs> edition chibis. Ooh, yeah, this is I it. like that. So, any, okay, so... <laughs> The contest is, uh, so to, to label it out, the contest is, uh, you have to obviously watch the entire video. Uh, and so what it is, is what we're looking for people to do is find the chibis wherever we put it in frame, screenshot it and send it over to us. And right. the first person to do it gets the first, uh, first ever print sticker editions uh, of said chibis. Yes. Uh, yes. Oh man, that's funny as fuck. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Hell so that's yeah. That's the creative side of being an event organizer. Yeah. There you go. Right there, baby. There you, you go. Know what keep, I mean? keep they, they working people it. Be on their feet, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that's tight and again that just gave me some ideas for like our live events too because like imagine like uh let's say during the senpai squad party right they're like yeah fi- like okay have you guys ever seen secret mickeys at disneyland oh, oh, oh dude i heard about it okay, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah. So what it is, is there's these like little molds of Mickey heads around mm -hmm. the park and you take yeah. pictures and you find it. And like, it's a small little like Easter egg hunk essentially. So I can imagine yeah. like, uh, like stuff like that for like at Kim's parties or even at the booth, like hey, find, find this on Kim. Like if, if you find like a secret chibi of like Kim underneath the table, boom, you win this price. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love the shit out of that. All right, cool. Yep. Um, all right. So just start to start wrapping this up. Um, yeah, so that's obviously to incentivize people to watch and everything. Uh, but please, please, please do us a huge favor. It'll help us out a lot. Um, please follow, like, and subscribe to all of our platforms. Um, yeah. You know, we're a small rinky-dink op operation, but, you know, I don't know about you guys, but I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about how everything's going. Um, we're clearly getting better. <laughs> so uh, yeah. thanks, everybody, for, you know, sticking with us. Um, you know, just shout out to all the, the people that are, like, hanging with us like right now you know in the early days because mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. obviously right now we're all stuck we we wish this could be a better you know quality production we wish we were together um you know mm -hmm. the three of us are still getting used to this online conference call type uh formula um yeah we're, we're, we're making do so shout out to everybody that's that's watching thank you guys so much thank uh for so hanging much. with us thank you, thank you. Yeah. Um, you coming through. Yeah. Uh, same thing. We have a, a, a mail time thing. So if you have any specific questions for us, feel free to shout us out in our uh, our mail time uh, email. Uh, it's mail time at sojubomb.tv. You can find it in the description. Uh, send us packages. I'm still checking the mailbox uh, once a week. <laughs> so yeah. You check them uh, out of me. Goddamn. <laughs> yeah. My, yeah. Own, my, my own business mailbox. <laughs> uh, dang. Oh, I saw you do that. You did like a, a, a uh, an opening, right? The other day. You, you're you opening mean? up some packages. People sent you some stuff, right? I think I saw it on your story. You open up some packages and you're like, oh, oh cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was my, that was my boy, uh, Jules. So he, Jules Senpai, he has his own uh, sticker brand. Yeah. Nice. He sent me a bunch of stuff. So yeah, we can plug him down here too. He yeah. Some, yeah. So Heck yeah. If you want to follow us, everything's in the description. Um, any parting words before we wrap up? Oh, I think at this time of recording... Mm. It's Easter. Happy Easter to everyone. We love you guys. Hey, happy, happy Easter. Easter. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Soccer con slash Easter edition. Nice. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. All right. Cool beans. Uh, sweet. sweet. Uh, I think that's it. Again, everybody be safe. Shout guys. out. Um, all the homies out there staying at home. Shout out to all of our healthcare workers, you know, fighting, fighting this pandemic on the front lines. You know what I mean? Like we, mm -hmm. you know, we're doing the easy part. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Thank you to everyone out there. Nice. Oh my god. I'm what? Oh my god. Oh, dude. Wow. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, that was good. No, no, that was good. That was good. That's why that's why I'm dude. I hope you don't mind. Like I'm, I, I get, I try to get the good stuff out, but you know, I, I do, I do mean it when I say like, man, like even though this is known now, no, I don't think anyone else can really pull it off because they don't have the connections you have. They don't have, and not even the connections. They don't have like the degree of relationships that you have to be able to pull this type of stuff off. So, yeah, and again, it's, it's very unique to you and your journey. Again, I, I, and I feel like that's why David saw the value in partnering with you, right? Like, that's why, you know, fucking like me and Marvin saw the, the value in partnering with you. Cause it's like, dude, like this is what you're worth. <laughs> and I try to drive it home almost every time we're on, we're on call together. It's like, dude, like this is what you are. You don't see it, dude. <laughs> oh, which is tight. You know what I mean? Which is cool. Oh, man. Awesome. Good shit. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that. That, that was uh, super insightful.